What is up guys and welcome to the third episode of the How to Code a Kit server. Uh, basically what we're going to do this episode is I'm going to uh, show you how to make the plugin.yml. Uh, basically that's where the server gets all the information about what kind of plugin it is and what it needs. Uh, and we're going to uh, make the first command. Uh, will, this will probably be a basic command how to do, uh, how to do like slash kit, how to choose the basic PvP kit or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, I'm just uh, doing it on the way. So but what you, first what you need to do is you need to uh, go to source, do new file. And what we're going to have to make is a plugin.yml. Now again, this is uh, basically a file that the server will get all the information from. Uh, what you always need to do first is uh, have the name in it. Uh, this is basically the name of the plugin that will show up in the, when you do slash plugins, it will give you a list of the plugins. The name is basically what shows up there. So we're going to do there is S kits. Uh, again, you can name it anything you want yourself. Uh, and now the second thing is what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do type in main. This will basically show the server where the main plugin uh, class file is, and and it needs that to you know start the the, the the enabling and disabling of the plugin. Now for us that is S kits dot main dot S kit main. That is our main plugin fi uh, class file, and uh, you can just put that in. Now, what I always do, I do a version file. Uh, this is good if you are doing a public plugin for people to uh, know what kind of version it is. If you are, if you have the plugin that's custom and you only keep it for yourself, you don't really have to worry about it. We'll just do version one. Uh, again, web you can website. Uh, again, if you make a public plugin, uh, I know. It doesn't really matter. We, we're just gonna leave it blank because you know you don't have to worry about it. Now, author um, some plugins or some websites that um, need the 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 author to know who built the plugin, and they will put that next to it. Uh, for us, we're just gonna put Cyrillum in there, you know, because I'm making it right now. Uh, that this is all kind of stuff that you don't really have to worry about. Um, doesn't really matter what you do, aside from the main the the main file. And the uh, and and the and the name, the rest doesn't really matter. Now, what does matter, uh, and what you do have to do, uh, you type in commands, uh, press enter again. You type space twice, and now this is the list basically that the server will get all the commands from. Um, for the for this episode, we'll just do kit. Uh, this is pretty much what it does when uh, when you do slash kit, and then we're going to uh, we'll do that in a little bit. We're going to show the server what, what the server has to do when you do slash kit. Now, this is pretty much the basic. We're going to add a lot of things to this eventually. But right now, this is the basics of the plugin, the YML file that you need to worry about. Uh, so we're going to back to the main to the main class file. And we're going to have to show the server what it has to do when, uh, when it runs the command. So uh, just go make a new package. You can... Put it in an old package too but this is what i always do to keep it organized and we're going to do uh make a commands class file and in there we do a new class uh as the name what i'm going to do is i'm going to do kit command because this is the class file that has to run whenever you do slash kit so we're going in there and now this is a tricky part because you have to do you have to type quite a lot to actually uh, have this working uh, you could co probably copy paste it uh, eventually implement oh god so, all right there we go so the what we have to do is we have to implement a command executor uh, what it does is whenever uh, whenever this class file runs the server has to know that that is actually a class file that does the command so we're going to type in command executor executor there we go uh, control shift o again uh, that implements it and what we're going to do now is uh, add override now don't I, I won't go into sp specifics because you don't really have to worry about any of that uh, public boolean on command uh, command sender sender just copy and paste this uh, string label uh, string arcs now I'll, I'll, I'll quickly uh, there we go. We need the command commands. There we go. And now we need a return 
which is for later. Uh, we'll make it actually true. It doesn't really matter. Uh, there we go. So I'll quickly explain what it is. Uh, whenever the server runs the command, it gives the information uh, which we're going to use in this uh, on command. The command sender is the one that sends it. Uh, we can do player, player, and then uh, actually what we're going to have to do is um, um, the kick command will only be for players. So um, we, we will be doing this if, uh, if you, you should have basic Java knowledge. Uh, if is if it doesn't if it does then um, <laughs> it, it will stop but you'll see that in a little bit if sender instance of player that we return false we'll just stop stop the line right there uh, we'll import player uh, basically what this says is if uh, the the explanation mark makes it like the opposite so if the sender isn't a player it just stops there it returns it, it stops and basically this will mean that um, only players can run this command. So that's the sender. And now what we can do is you can do player, player is player sender. And that will basically give us the player, which you saw in the last episode too, um, what we're going to do with that player eventually. Now command command is, um, again, you don't really have to worry about that because we already specified the command in the main class. Uh, string label is uh, is what kind of command they did. Uh, it's pretty much actually the same, except command has some extra information in it. And the string args is the arguments that the things that you put in. So, for example, if I do um, like slash kit a uh, a uh, uh, b b b c c c, the arguments will be a a a b b b c c c, uh, so, and that will all be stored in there. And that is quite useful. And we're going to use that eventually in a later episode. So don't really worry about that. Now you've got this. This is basically the, the the basic layout of what you have with a plugin, and we're have to go we're going to have to go back to the main class file, and we're gonna have to let the server know that that class file belongs to the kit command, which is specified in the plugin at YML. So just type in here get command uh, kit. We're gonna do set executor, and then new kit command there we go and then the semi column in the end and now we import that with control shift o again and now basically what we have is whenever someone does the kit command the server knows that that kit command is in this plugin uh, so it does slash kit and then the, the main class file tells the server what to do which is whenever someone does kit it says it goes runs this command right here <sighs> All right, yeah, it's uh, probably all like a little bit much to take in, but eventually you'll get to get used to it. And these are basically the basic steps which you have to do for almost every plugin. It, it really depends on some stuff which you uh, which you are going to, but you know, just don't worry about that. All right, so um, what we're going to do now is, uh, I guess, we'll give the player a, a the actual the simplest, um, you know, the simplest kit. Uh, and then what we're going to do is that if label, uh, which is, uh, wait, well, hang on. Uh, yeah, so the label is, I'm sorry, I'm actually like thinking of this right now. The label is already slash kit because that is the only th way the server will run this when the label is kit. And um, for instance, if we're going to do multiple kits, uh, we don't really have to worry about like um, how about how messy the code looks, but right now we're just going to arc. If arc zero, arc uh, every argument starts with zero. Uh, it's zero, one, two, three. So if you want the fourth argument, it's the it's number three. Uh, if that equals uh, ignore case, whenever that's basically what I do. So whenever someone types in like kit with all caps, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if arc three equals PVP, so for example. Whenever someone types uh, slash, you know, slash kit PVP, um, it will run what's in between these brackets. So that's that. Uh, and now we're going to have to give the player the basic kit. Uh, we'll stop it once it, the kit is done. There we go. And we'll send the player a message. Uh, we'll do it in nice, nice green again. Um, Let's see what we're going to send. Uh, 
you have chosen the basic PvP kit. Alright, that's that. Now, um, usually whenever a player does a command, you, you don't know if their inventory is full or if their inventory is empty. So we're going to clear that player's inventory. So player oh wait, uh, player .get inventory clear. That will um, clear every item in that player's inventory um, except their armor. So we're going to do player get, get inventory dot get armor. What is it? Get helmet. Um, I haven't done this in a while. Set type, and then we'll just do null. Null is basically nothing. And uh, I think that will work. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done this. Get uh, chest play dot set. Um, yeah, it should work, just work. Set type, null. And we're going to do that with for everything. So uh, the chest blade, the get iron, get leggings, that set type, null. And actually, while we're at it, we'll make the code a little bit more, uh, a little bit better to look at. Oh, God, hang on. Put that set type, null. There we go. Uh, now what you can also do, which is like a little trick, uh, basically what you're going to do is uh, public void uh, clear in clear inventory uh, player. Uh, wait, uh, player in, in inventory inf. There we go, and then import that. Uh, it is that one. There we go, and now we're just. We don't actually have to do like inventory because we already got that inventory. I'm going to copy and paste that. And then basically what this does is whenever we run this, it will clear the player's inventory, which we specified. And now we can remove this and then go for clear inventory and then player dot. Oh, whoa, 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 hang on. Player dot get in. Not a capital. I'm sorry. Clear it. Get inventory. We might have to make no, that works. All right. So um, basically, this is a shortcut. Uh, what we specified right here is um, whenever we want this, we just run this 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 public void right here, and we have to specify the actual inventory. Otherwise, it doesn't know what to clear, and we do that in between these brackets, which is player that get inventory. All set. So now we know that the inventory of the player is empty. And to give them the basic kit, we're just going to uh, give them like iron armor. Uh, player that get it inventory, yeah, inventory. Dot get helmet, and we're just going to set it to material. Dot iron helmet. There we go. And that is uh, for the helmet. Uh, we'll actually copy and paste that four times to make a little easier uh, we'll get the chest plate we'll get the leggings and we'll get the boots there we go and then we're going for iron chest plate iron leggings and iron boots and this is actually like this is completely the most basic thing uh, most basic kit, basically the player has uh, as the armor now, right now we cleared it, we cleared his inventory, so his inventory is clear, we cleared his armor. You don't really have to do this, but it's just like safe, safer to do. Uh, their inventory is clear and now we're giving them full iron armor. Uh, and then we're going to go for play, get inventory, dot, uh, add item. And then we need one material, I believe this is the way you do it. Hopefully, one diamond sword. And this is probably an item stack, isn't it? Yeah, it's an item stack. So we're gonna do a new item stack and then in between those brackets, we're gonna import item stack, control shift O again, it's a shortcut. And this is probably the other way around, is it? String item stack material. Hang on a minute. There we go. I'm sorry. Yeah, the one had to go after that. 
It has been a while since I've done this. So basically what we have right now is we have the... Uh, we gave the player full iron, we gave the player a diamond sword. Uh, later later on in this in this series, we'll get, I'll, I'll tell you how to add enchants to it. But right now we do that, and then we'll give them one row of soup. Uh, there is, it's always like a little bit annoying, because you have to actually add the soup like... Uh, like one time at a one at a time. Now you could use uh, what's called a a loop for this. Uh, actually, why did it do? I need to, to mm, soup mushroom mushroom soup. There we go. And we're just going to copy and paste that eight times. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And now what we have is we have a basic inventory. <clears throat> the player has full iron. The, the player has one diamond sword, and the player. As eight mushroom soup whenever they do the command slash kit PvP. And uh, I think I'll wrap up the episode right here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, leave a like and I'll see you all in the next episode.